It's amazing what will happen when you follow instructions and not just the instructions that came from the manufacturer, but the instructions that came from you. Um, my subscribers, channel members, and folks left some amazing information. It was very helpful. Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here, once again, is in my sister's basement, my temporary shop. And, okay, let's just talk about this. Last week, we uh, introduced the Bauer Cyclone Separator from Harbor Freight, and uh, it didn't work well. And, boy, did I get a lot of comments saying that I don't know what I'm doing and I didn't set it up correctly. So, in this video, I'm going to take a look at every recommendation. I'm going to implement those recommendations, and we'll see if there's any way this thing can redeem itself. I mean, for 40 bucks, it'd be great if it at least worked half as good as it should. Um, so let's give it a try. People commented that this has got to be sealed. There was no seal provided with the Cyclone and the top. These were both in the kit. And uh, if I if I blow, put my mouth on this and blow, I can feel the air coming out from right here. So no question about it, that could be sealed better. So that means I'm going to take this apart. That requires two eight millimeter wrenches. All right, so let's add caulk. I'm just gonna add it right around this joint right here. So this is right where the spigot end meets the lid. That should create something of uh, a mess, something of a fillet. Yeah, there's, there's chickens running around here. Okay, lovely. I will not be hired for my caulking skills anytime soon. All right, we're lining that up. And back in with the bolts. Again, we got a washer on a bolt. Pass that through. Okay, can we all agree that that is sealed? That's a step that wasn't uh, called out in the instructions, but we got a seal going. All right, next, somebody commented I didn't seal it well to the bucket. Let's get it sealed well to the bucket. So this is designed to be added and removed. I'm not putting any caulk or anything on this. But let's go all the way around. And you heard it snap in place. That's as good as that gets. Okay. Several people said I put the hose in the wrong place. I was using the hose that they provided to connect from the top over to the vacuum. They said that the hose that's provided should be used here on the inlet and that that's the hose you would connect to your tool or to a floor tool, uh, for example, and that your, your shop vacuum hose is supposed to connect to the top port. Okay, well, let's take a look at that. Here's, here's the hose that was provided. And you can see it's got two wobbly ends on it and a couple hose clamps. So I can force this over either of these points, but let's go ahead and we'll force it over Okay, let's get that on as far as it'll go. Right there, we'll tighten that down. So just so you can see the conflicting information I'm working with, as I look at this package right here on the back, and actually, if you look at the photograph on here, you can't really tell which hose is what, but if you make that out, it looks like there's a hose clamp there and there's not one there. So maybe that is the hose from the shop vacuum. And that is the short hose that was provided. Now, if I look at the description here, it says it contains a five gallon bucket lid, cyclone dust collector, mounting hardware, collection hose to connect wet, dry vacuum and clamp rings. It says it's for connecting to the wet dry vacuum. Um, however, if we go to the instructions, first thing I notice is this photograph here looks like that's got a nozzle on the end, which my hose does not have. 
Then they do show this universal connector, which we used. And there is very little information here as far as instructions. But to be fair, as somebody pointed out, it does say, let's find it here, um, attach the collection hose to the side of the port and use the hose clamp to tighten. Attach vacuum hose sold separately to the top port. Oh, okay. So that's why I went ahead and put that on the side. And then let's go ahead and hook our vacuum hose to that port. So here's the hose that comes with my, uh, my, my shop vacuum. And you'll notice it is exactly the same size as the top here. Well, let's try the other end. Maybe, just maybe, it's, no, it's exactly the same size as well. All right, well, where's that adapter? Remember the adapter that we cut down? All right, so that, in fact, will fit right into the end of this hose. And then that will go in here. Just ignore that. You just witnessed the tip over, and that's an issue that they all have, and, and several recommendations came to address that. Um, one good one was, well, one good one that actually uh, serves double purposes. If I take that five-gallon bucket and set it into this five-gallon bucket, I'm actually going to prevent this one from collapsing. When, when they collapse under vacuum, for this to be able to come inward, the sides have to be able to expand out. So by putting it inside of another bucket, you actually keep it from collapsing. And we could, if we wanted to, put um, uh, some bricks in the bottom of this and then slide the bucket into it. So that would prevent it from tipping over. So we could do that. That would help. And then I remembered this. I purchased this, oh, about a year ago for another purpose. This is a dolly for a five-gallon bucket. It, uh, it, it makes it portable. It, it adds weight. It's actually quite heavy. And um, it'll allow this to move around with the shop vac. So I'm going to combine those two ideas. Put the dolly right there and tighten that in place. So that should give me the best of both, both worlds. It'll give me the ability to move this around. It'll give me the ability to lift this bucket out for, for easy cleanup. Oh, I guess I need to put a, need to put a hole in that bottom bucket <laughs> because there's a nice, a nice vacuum between these two. Wow. All right, we'll just leave that. We're going to leave that on for now. Okay, so with that, we're good to go, right? Well, no. Now I have this loosey-goosey wobbly hose that doesn't fit any of my, my nozzles. It'll, it'll fit inside like that, but I, I don't get anywhere near a seal like I would be looking for. So I'm probably going to have to find some other kind of fitting to connect this here. Plus, I have... The original hose with my vacuum running here, that's about a six foot hose, and I'm left with this bottom of a four foot hose. So this isn't great. Also look at the lid tilting over here. Uh, but let's, let's take the dust out of that and let's vacuum it up and let's see at least if the dang cyclone works. So I've already blown the test. I just did it, but forgot to show you that the vacuum was empty. So I, I just dumped it all again. Let's double check here. I got, most of the dust out of this. We got pretty much an empty shop vacuum. Again, this is a Bauer brand shop vacuum. Connected. Let's go. Okay, I'm just going to keep this running, all right? Take the hose off. And there you can see we got, oh, we 
we got the majority of the dust, maybe all of it. We'll find out. And a little bit came through. It's pretty clean. And it's pretty clean. If this were plugged into something like a table saw or a joiner and not taking such high volume of dust all at once, it probably would perform even better. So um, I take back most of my criticism of this sucker. It's amazing what will happen when you follow instructions and not just the instructions that came from the manufacturer, but the instructions that came from you. Um, my subscribers, channel members and folks left some amazing information. It was very helpful. One of them was to lead me to a blog written by a guy named Bill Penz, who, uh, P-E-N-T-Z, Pence. Um, his studies and his design led the Oneida company to introduce this separator, which in my opinion is the one that Harbor Freight copied with the Bauer. Uh, again, we talked about that in the last video. I think they were okay to do that. Um, no infringement as far as I'm concerned, but that website and blog are fantastic. I'll link to it in the video description. You should check it out if you're interested in dust collection. You know, we do dust collection to keep things from landing all over the shop and tracking through the house. That's one immediate thing that we do dust collection for, but the real reason is to keep ourselves healthy. And that airborne dust that we inhale can be incredibly dangerous because that organic material begins to degrade in our body and gets into our cells. And a lot of folks are really sick because of exposure to, to dust. So uh, a cyclone separator is one great idea. Having that outside with your hoses inside is even better. But I encourage you to go check out Bill's website and blog to learn all you can about efficient dust collection and what you can do in your shop to keep yourself healthy. So I appreciate your questions, comments, sheep shots. I look forward to them in the midweek video, which will be filmed from a hotel in Minneapolis. So in the meantime, make it a great day.